Well, the only game news you're probably actually concerned about is the Nintendo Direct. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, very, very shortly. But let's get into some of the bigger titles. Welcome back. Oh, bigger titles. It's now the Nintendo Direct is the biggest news. There's other stories to talk about, though. Let's get into the game news. Welcome back, everybody. All right. So we'll kick things off with uh, last week. Discord announced that PlayStation uh, was going to get direct integration so you don't need the app to join Discord chats from your PS5. Um, that is hilarious because, uh, one, doesn't PlayStation have some kind of, like, stake in Discord? Like, a financial incentive? And two, this feature's been on Xbox for a while now, comparatively. And uh, it's just interesting. So I, I know of a few people personally that will benefit from this update, and it's kind of nice. makes it easier to get into the voice chats that you want to get into while playing with friends because uh, nobody wants to use party chat on these these consoles anyway all right let's move down the list here uh we got the june update brings uh for the xbox xbox june update brings dashboard background options saved wi-fi points mouse and keyboard on cloud and more across the platform this is kind of um uh, overview i'm gonna scroll through this pretty quickly this was a last week announcement that I thought was really relevant. Uh, your home screen will show selected game art, which I think is great. I, I need to go turn this on on my Xbox. We may do that um, very soon. But I think this is great because it showcases just some title art that you don't normally see, some key art for games. And it just kind of brings the games themselves front and center on your console. You can still have your theme if you want. You know, you can still have your image or moving theme but this is a really cool option and uh, i think again it just kind of highlights the the games you're playing and what you know what you've got selected on your home screen uh the xbox after many years of people requesting this can finally remember wi-fi networks so when i'm traveling i'm very rarely wired in you know uh, it's usually just using the local wi-fi for the hotel or airbnb we're staying in and uh you know you don't want to have to type that in every time, but it'd be nice if you like, you know, go travel somewhere the same and need to remember the Wi-Fi. That would be great. You know, I think that would be awesome. What's up, Ace Guru? Uh, so, you know, hey, it's cool. It can finally remember more than one Wi-Fi network. That's been a problem, I think, forever. It blew my mind that the Xbox 360 couldn't do this. And then the Xbox One also couldn't do this. So now... The Xbox Series consoles can, thanks to a dashboard update. Uh, managing your descriptions directly from your console, that's actually really awesome. You can go and, I guess, join or cancel directly from there, um, which is great. Some experiments you might see. Um, I'd see updates to Game Pass page layout style. Uh, yeah. Okay, wireless controller firmware updates. A firmware update for Xbox controllers. If you use the Xbox adaptive controller, you'll see a... You'll have expanded support for more connected USB accessories. This update will better support full functionality of some accessibility peripherals. Each port now supports up to 12 buttons, a second stick, and a hat switch. Also improvements to wireless disconnects for the Elite Series 2 controller when a headset is attached to the 3.5 millimeter audio port. Plus you'll get some other bug fixes to make your gaming smoother. Interesting. Game Pass sub navigation menu is now available for all players. Uh, this is the PC app Got is getting some updates. Microsoft's really been making some improvements to the Xbox app on PC, making it feel more like an Xbox dashboard, but with like a PC first kind of mindset. So that's some updates coming. And then uh, mouse and keyboard for cloud gaming is now available for everybody, which is pretty awesome. Um, because if you're playing in the cloud from like a PC and don't want a controller hooked up, just use a keyboard and mouse. And there you go. Problem solved. So I think it's cool. Uh, I wonder exactly how like games that I, I, I doubt you're enjoying Halo Infinite on cloud multiplayer. But if you are, first off, what's wrong with you? And second off, uh, I wonder how mouse and keyboard affects matchmaking that way. Does it just put you in the PC lobby? Because you're going to have a lot of latency that would be very difficult to keep up with. But uh, yeah, all right. So let's get to the stuff people really want to talk about and see the Nintendo Direct news. Let's go. All right. So we got a bunch of announcements. We'll kick them off. I'm just highlighting like the biggest stuff. Uh, personally, the best stuff 
but this is by no means a comprehensive overview. If you want to watch the reactions to that, we did that live on the channel. Uh, it's on YouTube, Rumble, Twitch, wherever you watch game news, it's probably there. The Twitch VOD is up. You know, you can go watch that. I think I think we did good. Will was a great co-host. All right. So first off, we got Mario and Luigi Brothership, which is a new Mario and Luigi game, which is great. Uh, I I'm honestly surprised by this. I thought these games got were going to be like dead forever because the studio that was traditionally behind the Mario and Luigi games got closed. But here we are with a, the first new release in a very long time. It looks really good. The trailer's really good. Not going to watch it here. We'd be here for a whole nother direct if we do that. So I'm again, I'm just highlighting kind of the the key announcements and the things I'm most excited for out of this one. All right. Next up, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. This is great because uh, this is a Wii port that went to the 3DS and now it's on the Switch. The Switch port will feature the 3DS exclusive content. Also, it's just a really good game from what I understand. I never picked it up. Now I'm tempted to. I really want to play it and Tropical Freeze because I didn't play that one either. But I always like Donkey Kong Country. I've always enjoyed those games. I'm not good at them, but I've always enjoyed them. Uh, so yeah, that was another announcement coming soon. Uh, January 16th. So very cool. All right. Mario Party Jamboree. Get ready for the biggest Mario Party yet. Uh, I called this in the predictions. We'll probably get a Mario Party before the year ends. And this is October 17th. This looks great. It's got a bunch of new boards, two returning boards from previous Mario Party games, and 110 mini games. Very excited for that. Uh, me and my family love playing Mario Party together. I just enjoy it. I, I've always enjoyed Mario Party. It's, it's a good time. All right, next, uh, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D comes November 14th, 2024. But then Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D are coming out in 2025. I've never played Dragon Quest. Very tempted to now, though. This looks great. Very interested in uh, in this game. But this, you know, we'll get the first. So apparently these are like the chronological order, not the release order that you should play them in. If they were release order, you'd play Dragon Quest 1 and 2 and then 3 that's not the case here so i find that interesting so you play three and then that'll be where you start in the story that these three games tell very cool all right this one this is we i've tempted to rewatch this whole trailer right here i've watched it a few times and i love it all right princess zelda it's up to princess zelda to save hyrule in a brand new legend of zelda story legend of zelda echoes of wisdom launches september 26th on nintendo switch and holy moly this game looks awesome. First off, Zelda's the, the the protagonist here. That she's saving Link and the rest of Hyrule. Uh, the gameplay looks awesome. The the staff or rod or whatever whatever they call it, it it can copy objects, enemies, and just has looks like we're gonna have some really good puzzles and experiences. And it looks like everybody's gonna play this very differently. So I'm excited to see how complicated I can make this. If you're familiar with how I played Tears of the Kingdom, you, you're you in for a treat. Or at least I hope so. I hope they leave this like super open ended for you to like copy stuff and place it just about anywhere. That would be fantastic, which from the trailer it kind of looked like it. You could stack items and make things happen. So I I'm very excited for this. This looks great. Um, they also gave us a look at the box art, which is awesome. This comes out later this year, September 26th, uh, my birthday month. So super hyped for that. Uh, I also now have, have a lot of pressure to get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD both completed before then. So we're probably going to ramp up the amount of times that those thing, those games are being played on stream. But this is this looks great. I, I don't know anybody not excited for this. Keep it to yourself because this looks really fun. The art style is great. I like the Link's Awakening remake personally. I thought it was awesome. So good to see this art style not go to waste and not be like a one off experiment. We also got a Switch Lite Hyrule Edition. It's a gold switch with the Hyrule crest and some Triforce iconography on it. It looks awesome. Gold with black buttons. It looks it looks great. It was great. Uh, good job, Nintendo, on making this look really cool. 
If you don't have a Switch Lite and want one, this is the one to try to get before the scalpers do. <clears throat> All right, next announcement. Uh, N64 got some massive updates. Uh, I don't know why I was scrolled down there, but okay. Well, Switch Online plus Expansion Pack got some massive updates. GBA is getting Link to the Past with Four Swords Adventures. Fantastic game. Metroid Zero Mission. Awesome. Wonderful Metroid game. It's a great way to experience the first game if you don't like some of the Nintendo hard challenges in the original release of Metroid. This is like if the original Metroid had had Super Metroid elements to it. It is so good. It's one of my favorite games. I remember thoroughly enjoying it. Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, and Perfect Dark coming to N64's brand new mature app, uh, mature 17 plus app. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a separate app on your Switch to play N64 games that are rated M. And this was so they don't have to adjust the rating to the existing N64 app. So it's still kind of family friendly, uh, accessible for everybody. Everybody can still play the other N64 games like parental controls and stuff aren't going to be affected. It's just this one would have to get like some kind of permission or workaround. I don't I don't know if that was their intention, but I do like the separation of it. It keeps, you know, it keeps you as a parent informed as to what to expect with each of these. Uh, excuse me. So sorry. All right. <clears throat> moving on. Uh, apparently, I opened this tab twice. Go me. All right. And then the biggest, the biggest announcement in the whole room, the thing that everybody wanted to see, was excited for, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Fantastic trailer. We got to look at gameplay, visuals, uh, some story hints, but nothing outright revealed. It looks great. It looks like what you loved about Metroid Prime, but new and shiny and beautiful. And I'm very excited to pick this up next year. It's right now just 2025. Who knows when next year, but it's just 2025. So that was the Nintendo Direct. That was pretty much the biggest gaming news this week within the last seven days. I think out of all of the presentations and things that have been going on for Summer Games Fest and what would have been E3, Nintendo dunked it. Uh, Xbox did great as well. So I would rate those two tied for first, just based on announcements alone. Quantity of games looks great. Finally confirming Metroid Prime 4 is phenomenal. I just, we have not seen anything on the game for, you know, some years. We got the logo reveal way back when, and then nothing. And then we found out, well, they were shifting it from Bandai Namco to Retro. And then now here we see the fruits of their labor. Retro has been cooking, y'all. It's going to be a great time. I'm really just excited for what this game holds. I'm wondering if they plan at any point on putting Metroid Prime 2 and 3 on Switch digital only Pikmin 1 and 2 style. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they would want to do, but I think I think we need more story. We need to be able to complete the story. I think that would be awesome. So anyway, that'll do it for the game news. Kind of short, but the Nintendo Direct, I mean, I didn't want to do the whole Direct all over again. So guys, let me know what you think. Which of these Nintendo games are you most looking forward to? Anything else on your mind? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video as well. And uh, I'm going to play Wind Waker HD now because that's still on the Wii U exclusively. Bye.